presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Eddie in Boca Raton. Hey, Eddie, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. It is a treasure to have TFNN every hour during the trading day to be there to help you, to guide you, and even to give you some peace of mind or like that somebody else is there with you while you're, while you're trading this crazy market, either up or down. Well, listen, we appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here because we wouldn't be out here, folks, if we didn't have all you guys, gals, tigers and tigresses as clients. And, you know, the market teaches you every single day, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here on this Friday the 15th of September, mid-month. And for mid-month, we've got a very interesting set of parameters to look at. You've got the, oops, I got, this is the E-mini that I had here. I'll just show you the E-mini just real quickly. Oh, uh, this is E-E-S-U-Z-2-3, there it is. Making another one of those H patterns. Is it going to break the low of the day? Oh, this is going to be very interesting. All right, let's just get right on with it. Basil Chapman, I am the uh, host of the Tiger Technicians Hour, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock Eastern Time each day, and my service here is the opening call daily newsletter. We're looking at the Dow right now down 260 at 34,647. Yesterday, with that very strong move, the Dow managed to flip from the nine-period moving average being very negative to a green positive one. And I watched to see, is it possible that today, in one day, it could flip to negative. Well, the day is young. We've still got almost an hour to go. We don't know yet if that's going to be the case. Uh, but let me show you something right here. This will be this will set the stage for what we're looking at this week going into next week. <clears throat> See this chart? All it does is it has uh, this is a closing price chart of the Dow. That's the big thick line. The green is the nine period exponential moving average. And the 14 period moving average is the black Ida webinar on this uh, just uh, recently in August. Um, what we're looking at in terms of when it stays green, that's really positive. When it goes pink, that's that's negative. But look what happened yesterday with that very strong move. It went to L, which means just as indicated, not everything means long. That's the upside. But intraday, just minutes ago, it started to go S. It started to show that S again. Now, that says to me, if you look at this particular chart, just for this one indicator, look what happened way back in April, going to the May uh, trading session. Right, look, right here, April the 26th to April the 27th. It went pink in the QQQ. It did not change to, to um, pink after it's flipped the next day to green until right here on the 7th of August. It means months you could go just trading this one indicator. Now, I wouldn't recommend using just one indicator, but it's, it's one of many that I use. I call it the indicator of last resort. And um, I'll explain why as we move along. So let's just go through the numbers here. So the Dow is in an arch. This is a pattern that I look at all the time. I look at arches. I'll just do this real quickly. People know this uh, who have, know my work, but I'll just show this right now. Uh, I've got it right here. If I can move that away. Here we go. I look at co uh, core patterns. One is a straight line up. The other is a straight line down. The other is a cup formation and an arch formation. Just these three uh, particular movements, formations, are very important. You'll see that all the time. Look, there's the arch formation. There was a little mini cup formation that failed. There is another arch formation. It held the low that, uh, uh, right here at 34,022. Then it made a second arch formation. So the lowercase h, I call it the dreaded h, because when it takes out this left side low, as it did over there, it can go a lot lower. Well, look at this. 
When it goes to a peak A or a B and then fails, that's higher highs. Peak A is the first, peak B would be the second. And then takes out this left side, now you've got to be really careful. But if it holds and then it rallies again, it can make an arch formation. Then there are a whole bunch of rules that go. But basically, the arch formation says, you're kind of stuck in a rectangle sideways move. Well, lo and behold, look what we did. Arch formation. Rallies, comes back in. You can see the S. The day's young. I can tell you, between I've seen the last minute where things change and you can get this S just disappearing and you can have a really good rally at the end of the day. So it's a, it's a daily bar. We can only talk about it at 4 o'clock when the bar concludes. So the Dow right now, I'm down 260. <clears throat> Yesterday it was up 305. And now it's given back a chunk. It's had a made a lower low. Uh, but look, I use these indicators. The Magdi's okay. The stochastic is weak at 61%. This blue line, the on balance volume, which is the, the, this is the one of the key indicators that gave us the sell signal right here at the exact high of August the 1st at 35,679. And we still remain short on the shorter term because I have to emphasize in all these charts, look, the weekly charts have not given any signals. They're still in buy modes. Monthly charts, we don't have to talk about that until the month's finished. Look at the S&P. S&P right here. Where did I type that? Let me just find where I typed it. There we go. SPX. .x. There we are. Look at that. The S&P sharp move down on the 50 period exponential moving average. That pink, that green nine period moving average hasn't flipped to negative yet. But it looks like it wants to. And let's go to the S&P here. And we'll look at this chart. That's all just got those three lines. Easiest indicator you could use. Look, there it is. Uh, S&P. Green, but the price is coming down yet again, and it's getting closer and closer, but it has not turned negative. I, I, I can assure you that we, I'm going to be watching this closely because by the end of the session, let's see if the Dow, that indicator has moved. Nope, it's still S. That means it's still in a cell, uh, cell signal on the one indicator. All right, here we go. We're getting back to our story. We got the – so the parameters I'm looking at for next week, if – I don't care what the reason is. If there is a spike that can take the S&P to the 45, uh, somewhere in here will be the first step. So about 45.22 area, that'll be really good action. That'll really help the weekly chart. But if for any reason, come Tuesday or Wednesday, and we sort of start looking at 4,400, that's not very good. All right, so here we go. Each one, I'll do the same thing here. The QQQ this is the index 100. And this this technique here, I'll just do this one very quickly just to show you because we are always having new people looking at the uh, uh, coming to TF and N. So let me just show you. I have a, a, pa a pattern that I call the falling axe. That's just a nice, simple way of looking at something that is really a declining, expanding cone formation. What happens is, Price goes to a peak D, E, or F. That's the fourth or fifth highest peak. Then it starts to pull back, and it makes lower highs and much lower lows. There. And then all of a sudden, it, it forms some kind of support, and it starts to rally. Well, this trend line right here, this down, the, the upper trend line, declining trend line, that is, if that's taken out, you could have a move that goes one-to-one -one expansion to the upside, but you're going to go one thing at a time. So what I've learned to do over the years is within this upper trend line, I draw a tiny little channel, and it's incredible how many times the price goes right to the edge and then pulls back. It does not break out. That's what we see in the QQQ. And as I said before, the SMHs are really helping it to pull back. I'll be back. Basil Chapman sitting in for the one and only Tom O'Brien. He'll be back on Monday. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here. Let me just go through this. Look, he has this pattern. You remember I was talking about this pattern that I call the dreaded H because if it takes out the left side low, it can go a lot lower. Well, this is the pattern we were talking about. Remember, this is the pattern, lowercase, straight line down, make an arch formation. Well, look what happened. Right here in the 10-minute E-mini chart, it ran to peak A, then a peak B, and then failed to make that arch formation and did almost a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. Now what are we doing? In this little mini one, you've got a lowercase h that held the left side low, and now another h is forming. It's trying to build up some support to maybe take out that high, but it's still basically in a rectangle formation. So we'll see what happens. The day is young. And look at this. You made your cup formation. This is the reverse y, where you come up and you retest that left side high. And what happens after that is really important. Now, this does not become a new uh, letter. This is still... Uh, gray A, I call it gray because it's under that peak D with that doji candle and then a B and this is still a gray C, I, I'll change the color right now since I'm talking about it why? Because it hasn't, it needs to take this out by one quarter of a point to say that I can call it a different letter so watching this closely, does it go to a leg D uh, right here, if it does and it can even get to the 45 uh, 45.05.75 level then there's a good chance it could touch 4506.75, the 200 period moving average. This is live as we're doing it, just to show you how these patterns repeat over and over. You know, the, the pattern is really, it's, it's a fractal of, of human emotion. It's a point in time of human, human emotion. And it repeats over and over. It doesn't matter what the time frame is. For instance, we've seen so many double tops. Look at this. We've got... Um, it's, uh, someone was talking about this particular chart the other day, Kavana. Uh, this is that car, the order, uh, online order sales. So what does it do? It goes to 57.19 in June at a peak E. It pulls back, comes down, makes a low, a little kind of a doji low right here on the uh, 17th of August at 36.42. 
And what does it try to do? It tries to make a new high. It goes to peak A, peak B, peak C. Look at this. The nine period moving average flipped positive. The MACD was positive. Stochastic was over 80%. On balance volume was good. Not great, but very good. Um, and what does it do? It goes to that D and then at 56.80. This is 39 cents. What is it? It's 40, uh, yes, four, less than 40 cents away from the previous high. We've seen, and not only that, Look at this, the high that was made back in the week of 19th of August of 2022 was 58.05. 58.5, and in that time, it's already plunged uh, to the three, 3 or $4 level. And now it's come all the way back, and it comes within pennies, and it does it twice. I, I, it's, it's lovely the way these things work. So what we're looking at here is... Um, so. This did not become a new blue ladder because it, it failed underneath that previous high. So there's the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. If this particular one takes out that left side low of 40 on the E mini of 44.9500, round number 44.95, and holds there for, for one 10 minute bar, in fact, holds at the 4486 level. We might have a very ugly close, but that's the way you've got to look at it is what happens on the downside. It could be a propeller shaft from this straight line down to this fulcrum here to the downside. Or sometimes when these sideways narrow rectangles occur at the bottom, it might just touch the, the low and then spiral to the upside because all the sellers like distribution, in this case, accumulation is happening right here. So we'll see what happens. In the meantime, it's a very ugly day, minus 53 in the S&P futures. So um, let me go through the gold. So gold at this particular point is up uh, $13. So using the same techniques, you see this 200 period moving average, I like to just keep it there. You never need it until you need it. And then you don't have to go searching for it. You just have it there. Look at the way it was support. Then it was resistance back in late June, early July. Then it broke out, and the, the gold contract, the continuous contract, went peak A, B, C, D, E. Last one was a peak D right there back in May, all the way up at the 21. Uh, it's a continuous contract, so the price changes. 2143 level. Here we are down at this particular point in 1945. We've been here quite a bit recently, but the nine, the nine period moving average is still very weak. The stochastic is at 21%, still very weak. On balance volume did make a little bit of a turn, but it's just a turn. And look at that resistance at the 200 period moving average of 1970. So while I've been saying for quite some time that gold has acted so well when you put it together with the, the sharp move up in the dollar, um, it's still not going anywhere. It just isn't the place to be for, I mean, maybe individual stocks, sure. But look at the weekly chart. It's really struggling. Look at the monthly chart stuck in this. The, I drew this rectangle in to show how long, for a couple of years now, we've just been in the sideways trading band. Look at silver. Look fantastic about a, 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 two weeks ago. Goes to another peak. Look, peak D over there, that fourth highest peak, comes tumbling down. Does a one to one from that falling axe formation to the upside, just misses it, goes to a peak D, doji candle, pulls back, comes down and breaks. Look at this, the low of 21 round number. Oops, the low was 20, yeah, 22.618. Huh, 618, that's interesting. 22.618 in this continuous con silver contract. And here we go to uh, 22.555, a lower low. So this is the pyramid or Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down pattern. And look at the weekly. It's struggling. Look at gold. I mean, look at the dollar, DXY. Dollar's just been making higher highs and basically higher lows. And you see this Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line? I like to extend these usually. And look what happened. It's right at that line. It keeps. It's like a magnet line on a diagonal. How does how do a, how does a chart know that there's a diagonal? I can understand horizontal. You remember back in in June, the price of whatever it is hit 25, and uh, last week it was at 20, and today it's oh 25. It's that same number. You remember horizontal. 
but to remember 20, then 25, then 30, then 35, then 40 at an angle like this, I don't know how it does it, but look how it keeps bumping. Now, I call this the tide. If you understand that the tide rises and each proportional move up, it's just moving the same kind of amount, but with the tide rising. If it starts to accelerate like you have in some stocks, like in CCJ, is it? Yeah, look at that. Just it breaks out from this rising pattern and goes horizontal uh, and, and parabolically up. You've got to anticipate at some point you're going to get some kind of a pullback. And that's what I'm thinking is about to happen in the uranium stocks. They've had a fantastic move up. This is Cameco Core, uranium fuel. Uh, someone had asked me about UUU, which is also, and, and uh, uh, Jacob this morning had a really good program. Uh, he was sitting in for Tommy and he did, um, he was talking about this UUU about. Uh, that they are expanding a mine now uh, for uranium. Well, look at this. It's had a fantastic move, and it's only $8.35. We are fortunate enough to have a stock called Uranium Co Corporation, um, U Uranium Energy Corporation, also had a spectacular move. And now it's just about to have a little bit of a timeout. I'll be back. I'll be having a timeout for this break. That was down 264. SMB's down 51. Basil Chapman Steve sitting Rhodes in started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFA. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV.
So look, we've had a tremendous amount of, of shorting and a tremendous amount of selling. This is options expiration. This next uh, 20 minutes or so, you're going to see something either really quite amazing or not. But look, here's this cup formation. Remember, you, cup, arch, cup, arch, and here's a cup making a second cup like a W formation. I put in the left side, right side price time match and said within the next few minutes, it should try to take out the high, which is doing right now. So question now, this becomes a new leg D to the upside. And remember I said if it starts to get into this range right here, then it could try for the 200 period moving average of 4506. This is the E-mini. I'm doing this live because it's just great to be able to talk about these particular patterns and, and, and prove them and let them prove the kind of techniques that you've developed uh, in real time, because I, we don't know what's going to happen next, and neither does the chart until it moves. So look, the 200 period moving average, the closer you get, the more it becomes a magnet. Does it get close enough? Does it get within a, a point of that so that it can get stick to it? Well, we'll see. Look, here it is at uh, 45.04 trying its best in this leg D. Remember, the D is the objective in the trap waves to get from a buy signal to a buy mode upgrade that says you should go to at least a D. Well, the stochastic's not at 80%, it's at 71%, so that's fading. The MACD is positive, the 9 is over the 14, so it's this particular pattern that has to generate its own upward uh, um, kind of, I'd call it the torque, to break right into that and then over it for the first time in hours. All right, so let's just get back to our story here because some of you really want to know what's going on in stocks like uh, what's going on with the TLT. Well, the TLT is down 43 cents at 93.09. This is iShares 20-year Treasury bond ETF. This is serious stuff because it's making this arch, the dreaded H pattern. It did it over there and failed at a peak B, did it over there and failed at a peak B. This went to a C a little bit higher Gap down and then gap down again, fill the gap. But look at this, that 92.23 uh, level is kind of beckoning. It's looking and saying, hey, I might need to be touched here because 91.85 was the low in October. Look at this huge, this is that same pattern we saw in the TLT. It makes an arch, holds very nicely, it makes a second arch like an M and then comes down very sharply. And look at the nine period moving average in the weekly that's still way under the 14. The MACD is weak. Stochastic is very weak at 18%. But that on balance volume, I need to put this on an extended because it looks very low. It looked very low in that squash. But look at this. This is the lowest it's been since they made the high right at 155.12 at the exact high. Whew. Um, this is going to be very interesting because it's getting to an oversold condition in the weekly chart, let alone the daily, but the weekly. And that says, at any point, be prepared that there could be a strong move to the upside in bonds. So yields come down. We'll talk about yields. Look at this. The TBT mm -mm, has not gone to the 36.44 level, 3.644 that it hit mid-August. But the high today is 35.95, it's 50 cents away. In other words, uh, it's 3.644 was the high, that's a percentage. And here the high is today 3.595. And the weekly chart says, well, it's still got a way to go, to go to the 3.92 high of the October. That was the October low in the market. So it's a work in progress. And you can see on the daily chart, the MACD is kind of weak. The stochastic is at 83%. That's good. On balance of on, the blue line is very good. The 9 is still over the 14. So it's still some internal strength. And that just says to me, looking out for the daily, this arch formation, sorry, this cup formation, this is the TBT. This is the yields themselves. In the weekly, look at this. Look at this weekly chart. Compare. It doesn't matter what the chart is. Look at this. Look at that. It's the same chart. A chart is a chart. It doesn't know. It just does the stuff. This is that Carvana chart that, that it came within pennies of the previous high um, at a peak D. So charts tend to continue up until there's a really significant change in the tide. And talking about the tide, let me just show you something very interesting. Because if you're looking at uh, the VIX index, even with all the selling, 
This VIX, VIX index today is a nice big green candle. Look at this monthly chart of the volatility index. I drew this in ages ago. I mean, this I squeeze it so you can see how far back this goes. This goes back forever. Bank crisis, 2008, October. Hits 89.53, peak D. Now, I don't use the peak so much in the uh, volatility index because that's just a purely emotional one. But here we are, 89.53. All the other crises were in the, um, in the 40s and 60s. And then all of a sudden, you get 85.47 in March of 2020 when we made that major low. And the coronavirus business fed, everything was in play. And then look what happened. It comes all the way down. And this core baseline at about 13, between 13 and 14, we keep coming back to that. At some point, you know that there's going to be some kind of crisis to push it higher. So using the volatility index as a guide, because I know that here yeah, we're all about education, yeah, TFNN, I would say if at any point you're getting triple digit down moves in the Dow, minus 50 to minus 60 in uh, the S&P, and the volatility index screams higher and starts to hold in the 16.80, 17.30, or even touches that 200 period moving average of 17.68, and it does it for two consecutive days, one spike to the upside, that's not a big deal. But if it does it and closes, that's the whole thing. The VIX index has to close at the high, the price has to close at the low, and you have to repeat and you have to have the market open really negative the next day, try to rally, and then close at the low of the day, and you repeat this H pattern. That you, from a starting point, you try to run anything, you take out the left side low. That's where you get bear market. So this really is it. You can see it in the chart. This is for the, let me just go back. I'll, I'll choose the uh, XLK, which is the, this is the, the S&P Select Spider Fund. All-time high, 177.04 back in December of 2022. Uh, is that 2022? I think it was 2021. And... It makes a new recovery high at 181.46 in July, pulls back sharply, and now it's kind of tilted down again. Um, and look at the weekly chart. There's that H pattern, but it hasn't taken out the left side low. So what I wanted to say to you is that I like to go through time frames. And the monthly time frame says, this is fantastic. But when you measure it, you say vertically, Look at that high back in uh, December of 2021. Look at this high right here of uh, July. I believe it was July, July of this year. And look, the MACD is good, but it's not anywhere as good as it was then. But that also gave you the biggest pullback. The stochastic is holding steady at 92%. That is good. If it's flat and steady, that's good. On balance volume is good. Nine's way over the 14. So I think you have to be very careful. What I am saying is that on the shorter term, we've had a lot of volatility. Markets been very weak. The weekly charts have held really well. Next week's the week they either start to plunge or they say, no, I'm just digesting huge gains, taking my time. I'll be back. That was down 283. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. So this is exciting. Look, didn't I not talk about this lowercase h that can go to a lowercase m within a rectangle formation and watch how it deals with the left side low? How exciting is this? We're watching this closely. Lowercase h goes to a lowercase m. That's the second arch. Watch the support. If it starts to go under 49.93, that means that all of this could be a fulcrum for the midpoint to go sharply lower into the close. But those are all the ifs. The day's young, even with 15 or whatever minutes it is to go. Uh, uh, what is it, 18 minutes? Ah, we're going to be watching this. And on the upside, it could just continue in this rectangle. It'll just drive everybody nuts until something happens that breaks between 44.93 and 45.04. <laughs> so let's just watch that. Okay, let's get back to our story. Much more important that we look at this. Um, and we're, what we're looking at here is, uh, so a couple of questions. Look, Apple, very important. It's in the Dow. It's in the S&P. It's in the QQQ. It's in the XLK, the chart I showed you earlier on. That's the S&P Select. Uh, tech sector. And here it is making the arch formation, that dreaded H pattern, but it hasn't taken out the 171.96 level. It could stay here for a little while because um, the stochastic is at 12. It could have a bounce at any moment because it's in the, in the teens. And that means, uh, uh, it, yes, it could go down back as it did before into the single digits. But uh, a lot depends on, on many factors. And one of the factors is this up channel that it broke out of with the doji candle peak E in the Chapman wave. And now it's pulled back. 61.8 uh, level would be at about 100 and what is that? It's 68. And it's at 174 right now. But most importantly, this is a, a stock that is important to not just market momentum, but to sustainability, because this is a stock that was about a month ago, maybe a little more, about two months ago, people were saying, ah, oh, Apple is just, it is the most spectacular stock. It is just, uh, it, it's here to stay. And suddenly there are a lot of things that aren't going right for Apple. Now, the chart, the monthly chart says, are you kidding? Of course, it's here to stay. Well, of course, it's here to stay. Apple is not going to go away anywhere. But certainly on the shorter term, this H pattern right here, if it starts to close underneath the low of 171.96, uh, no, sorry, this low here, this is the low of the week of August the 18th. Once, yeah, it is 
um, that's a different thing altogether. And then you get this dreaded H that says, uh oh, look for the next uh, gap or a uh, low. In this case, it would be this low of the week of 170.52. That's really close. But then you've got to look for the ones that are much deeper. So I'm, I think this is a very important moment. And my, 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 the reason why we've remained short the, uh, the Dow and remained short the SMHs from two points off the high is I think the semiconductors really tell the story for, for not years but decades. Where the semis go, so the market generally goes. The one might lead, the other might might follow, but it doesn't matter the direction. And the semis at this particular point, look at this, makes a high. It's unbelievable. The Van Eck Semiconductor ETF makes a high of 100 and 159.42 November of 2021. Plummets down to 83. Look at this beautiful bar symmetry. I talk about this all the time. I showed in my, in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour, at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And in my charts for my subscribers, my opening call subscribers, look at the number of bars to the downside and the exact number of bars to the upside. A week early, it gets to what? 161.17 July the 31st. A double top within... <laughs> Two points, less than two points after a year. It's almost two years, a year and a half, year and three quarters. That's amazing. And there's the same thing. There's the dreaded age for me. So I can't take this lightly. All I can say is that you've got to be very selective. I think if you've got something that's working, for instance, I had a call this morning about Eli Lilly. Well, this is a stock that's just had a spectacular move. But it's in the right, it has been in the right area. Now, look, this turned down from a peak D after Chapman instant restart. These are techniques I talk about in my show. And now it's pulling back. So this makes it kind of tough because you say, oh, the area, look at the, I, I can't buy anything here. It looks really overbought. Well, that means you have to wait, but have a plan. This is a fantastic company. If you're really interested in the pharmaceuticals, this or uh, Merck, Merck, same sort of thing. I made it top earlier on, made its top over here, right over here. That was back in May of this year at 119.65. Still a fantastic company. And when you look at the monthly, the weekly chart, look, yeah, maybe it's a head and shoulders, but really it's basically a sideways consolidation. So just whatever charts you're looking at, just take your time and say, I need patience. I like this or whatever it is you're looking at. And then maybe put two two bids in. One is very close to where it is now and one lower down. You can even have a third much lower down if you've done your homework and you like the category, you like the stock. But what I'm worried about is, look, the IYT, the transportation index, uh, I love this, I shares Dow Jones Transportation Average Index Fund. Ooh. So look what it did. It made a high of two, just about 267, I think it was. Let me just double check. 267.85, uh, 31st of July, plummets down. And look how close it is to the 200-period moving average. You need to even look at that since it was there back in uh, somewhere like May and broke out to the upside. No, but now it's becoming really important. And it's got this V-shaped pattern, upside-down V-shaped pattern. It says, wow, the, tri the tide. See, the tide here is decisively in the daily chart in a cell mode. The weekly chart, as this closes, because we've got 10 or 15 minutes to go on a weekly basis, I have to say that the transports have gone from a sell signal, which I would have issued intra-week, to if it closes like this, even with a little doji candle, I'm going to say, I believe I have to upgrade it to a sell mode. That's just a designation. It doesn't say, oh, my God, sell mode, now it's going down to 200. Is it 240? No, it just says the designation right now is it's fallen enough to consider it in a sell well, if the transportation index is acting so badly, and I'm a little worried about something like a Federal Express, look at that big move to the downside today after trying to rally, and look at that rollover. I, this could just be a slow digestive phase, but I'm worried. UPS, um, I'm, I'm just worried that in this whole transportation sector, and these, this is part of it, United Parcel Service shipping, um, look, major top in the 190s, comes down to 160. The weekly chart has got almost an A to B equals C to D. This is what everyone on TFNN talks about. This is the um, 
This is the extension. Um, and it's at the left side low that it was at back in, was that October? Yep, October, the week of the 14th of 2022 at 154.87. Here it is. It, it's already hit. one. Look at this. It's already hit. 150. Oh, my. 155.10. I don't know how these charts do it. So if I was drawing in a left side, right side price time match, um, I would choose this candle. That wouldn't have been right. It would have to be a little bit further on. But look at this beautiful arch formation. Well, not beautiful if you're in it. Look at that. That's the major support. That's the transports. I'll be back. Basil Chapman sitting for Tom O'Brien. We'll be back. We'll wrap it up in the, with the next segment. And, uh, yeah. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So my expression is that a long, narrow rectangle can last a lot longer than your patience and you anticipate every time it hits the bottom, it's going to break down. And every time it hits the top, it's going to break up and it just stays in this range. And you can lose more money trying to go long when you should be going short and going short when you should be going long. This is this pattern is just one where you just got to watch it very closely. And that could even remain overnight into Sunday. We'll be watching it closely. Now, let's just wrap it up and I'll tell you what I'm looking at. So we've got, let me just do them one at a time. The Dow... Um, at this particular point, look that S has gone, fallen into place, and that just says it's back to confirming the sell mode. Watch closely because at th below 34,400 on any session intraday, 
uh, this week, it says just be careful because now we've got the lowercase h that's going to go to the lowercase m, and then that makes this low right here of the um, fifth, uh, 6th of, of, uh, of September, 34,291, the next target to the downside. Upside, you need to break into the 35,100s and stay there for two or three days. That'll be really positive. That'll put a squeeze on the on all the shorts, and that's what you'd be looking at. Using the S&P, the same type of thing. S&P, sharp move down to the 50-period moving average. A close below this particular low, you had 44.30. Is that a 30? Yep, that's a 30. Says that be careful. All of a sudden, you're starting to look at this trend line as the key support level. And on the upside, a break into the 45.53 area, 100 points higher, is really needed to say, okay, that weekly chart is going to get even stronger. Right now, the weekly charts are still holding okay. QQQ, one, two, three. Same thing, sharp move down at 370. If it starts to trade at 365 anytime this week, that's a big problem. It needs to get to the 382 level. The IWM, Russell 2000, being very weak. It's just stuck in a trading range. I don't even want to talk about it. But look at gold. Uh, gold has given back a chunk of the gains, and that's what I'm saying. As long as the dollar, which I should mention we are long, uh, opening call, we've been long for a long time. The dollar is at 105.31. If it closes two out of three weeks above this high of the third of March, of the 10th of March, and that is 105, well, let's go to 106. If it closes that two out of three weeks, the dollars will go even higher. But that will be the resistance area. Have a wonderful weekend, and for Jewish people who are listening,